to introduce what design means to me when when uh, we have to deal with um, sustainability on campuses on what it's really green campus uh, for me and how, in which sense design uh, can play a big role so i think that it's more about like understanding the spatial um, feedback the spatial uh, relevance the role that space plays when we design a sustainable campus and we manage a campus and uh, we have in our campuses a limited space so we don't have space for everything and we have also to balance how to better manage uh, the way uh, we use space so that's uh, that will be a bit, a bit my focus um, first of all, I like to um, uh, shortly introduce a little bit myself. I'm uh, uh, the environmental uh, sustain the delegate for environmental sustainability on campus, and then we have uh, uh, other delegates that work more on uh, on the social aspects of third mission and international cooperation and so on. Uh, but anyway, we I try to also embrace sustainability uh with a wider perspective but my focus is more on how we uh can really organize manage a campus in a better way this picture here is um our uh, campus uh, main campus in uh, milan politecnico and i will refer a lot uh, to what we are doing on our campus um first uh, topic i would like you to uh think about is that most of the time when we speak about uh, green campus uh, design we are dealing with existing campuses with with places that are already uh, consolidated my campus here uh, was built 100 years ago and has all the limitations that you might uh, expect uh, an old campus uh, has and it's also very uh, packed it's very dense uh, it has a lot of uh, uh, little uh, spaces uh, in between buildings and i think this is also a challenge that that we have to deal with so it's 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 very rare we start from scratch designing a campus so i'll uh, i'll better try to focus my attention on some research on how to regenerate uh, a campus and uh, uh, i'm working for an urban simulation laboratory and that's also important to mention because uh, in my research uh, we really work on anticipating the future of places of mostly of uh, neighborhoods urban districts and of course university campuses as well uh, to try to um, work on simulating um, the, the future uh, in terms of uh, uh, sensory aspects and in terms also of um, environmental climate uh, and uh, aspects and issues and i think this is something that at the end of the presentation we will come back to it because another thing that uh, when it, when it comes to and it, yeah, I just uh, go quickly uh, through this so we um, you see some images about um, our uh, laboratory on the top you see here an estimation of uh, solar potential on the urban texture this, this is a work that we did many years ago and uh, on the bottom you see a skyline of uh, Milan and we try to use integrate 3D modeling uh, and uh, visualization immersive visualization uh, also to give back the visual uh, and also the other sensory aspects we are working on uh, of, of urban transformation I will go very uh, quickly through, through this but it's important that we use simulation for evaluating design but also for designing for co-designing um, places and I think this part especially when it comes to universities how to get the community and students involved in um, working together in imagining together the future envisioning the future uh, of, of their campus and our students have skills um, to to deal with it, to cooperate, to uh, support our work in design and, and we have also time for developing uh, long-term master plans and projects. So I think using simulation uh, for co-design is a, is a very important uh, challenge. Here I provide you some really uh, examples from, from our experience. This is the main square in front of, uh, of our university. This is the main building of our campus and in front of it uh, we have we have a big space which is a public square uh, 
um, that's uh, that was renovated um, three almost uh, seven years ago, and uh, it was a former parking lot. And we used simulation to envision at that time different scenarios using um, using really uh, kind of at, at that time immersive uh, um, simulation scenarios uh, that that provided people alternative um, design schemes. And I think this is a powerful way to get people on board, even if you are not a technician, even if you are not, uh, let's say, um, a person that can read technical uh, uh, drawings, you can still uh, understand very quickly uh, a 3D um, immersive experience. So it was, you could, um, uh, let's say, navigate through the image, you could uh, see different scenarios, different views, and this is very helpful for uh, the discussion. So that's uh, for us co-design. Moreover, we just uh, implemented a new virtual theater uh, on campus. It's it's a, actually it's a sort of a, um, immersive room. It's a cylinder, a seven meter diameter, and we can use it for really immersive experience. So here we include beside uh, vision, uh, we, beside the sight, also the sound, and this is the an image you can have of this. And this uh, um, simulation we. Um, uh, the, the lab is called Labora. I have an issue here with with the uh, with the type. There is a issue with, uh, with the uh, typing, but uh, I will fix it. Um, so uh, this is an image of a road in, in uh, next to our campus, and this was designed by our students. And uh, we use now simulation through this new uh, facility, uh, so that students can also enter this virtual theater and and see. The impact, or let's say the, the anticipation of, of the design outcomes in in a subjective way, so they can walk and navigate the projects. And I think this is a, a very powerful way also for our students in architecture and urban planning and urban design to uh, better understand and evaluate uh, critically uh, their design. And this was done on campus. Uh, well, here I have a, <coughs> a video. I, I Works, I don't know, but uh, you can at least see. And uh, this is the type of simulation uh, we can get inside this room. And it's, it's quite uh, impressive how really you can get a sense of space. And uh, and this is, I think, this is something we, uh, when we design a, a sustainable campus, we have to think about how really people and students perceive or would like to perceive and, and live in their environment. Um, I go then quickly through our lecture. Uh, so I try to organize a lecture uh, on uh, trying to argue uh, why our universities uh, can play a really key role in accelerating urban sustainability. So why universities are so important to, to, to in their design to, um, to provide a model for urban sustainability and why the spatial setting and design of a campus is crucial as well. So these, these are the main topics. Uh, and then um, I anticipate you four questions that uh, you will see then on the, on the mirror board. So please uh, try to, um, let's say, um, take note about, about these questions because I will some the, you can somehow read the, my lecture through these uh, four lenses, uh, even if the lecture has an independent structure. But I um, pose you some questions that are still very relevant for our um, for our governance of sustainability on campus. Uh, the first question, which is a very broad question, how to involve and delegate students, even delegate students in the use of open spaces to promote, promote sustainable lifestyles and ensure social and environmental sustainability of our campuses. Uh, in other words, uh, we have uh, open spaces and I think through the pandemic we have learned how, how these spaces are precious, are important and could be really um, they're used, they, they offer a big potential for promoting sustainable lifestyle. So which type of, uh, uh, let's say, equipment, which, which types of, of devices, of, of, of uh, really of structures, infrastructure, uh, shall we uh, embed in our campuses in order uh, to involve students to make a better use of those spaces? Um, interrupt me if, if something is, is not clear. Uh, then I have a second question. Um, 
which is more referring to the sense of uh, a sustainable campus, in my opinion. Um, shall, we, uh, shall a university be designed and managed as a closed system uh, to be self-sufficient, maybe of grid? Everything has to be solved inside its uh, boundaries, it, inside its limits, or shall we uh, achieve a symbiosis with its surroundings, maybe with the neighborhood, with the district, with the city? Because uh, as, as far as it uh, is, is my experience, of course, we have always this like tension between uh, trying to make everything alone to provide the best system we can get inside our um, boundaries, uh, having our systems organized, everything. On the other side, we have this tension to like also cooperate and work with the city, with the neighborhoods to make the system more efficient through collaboration and, and a sort of uh, yeah, symbiosis with, with the surrounding cities. But this also depends where your campus is located. So maybe having in mind your situation, how is this like uh, system, is it closed or is it open? Shall we work together? Shall we first be independent as a university and then uh, open to the city? Or what is your opinion on this topic? I think this has to do really with the um, a sort of urban metabolism idea, which, which is the way a, 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 a campus works. Is it, uh, is it closed or an open system? Then I have a third question, um, which is more about, like uh, I, I was mentioning before, our campus is really small, very compact, very dense. Uh, how to better balance the relationship between open spaces and indoor spaces towards a sustainable campus? What, what makes really a campus design to be called sustainable? Is it, is it really the presence of greenery, of, of green areas? Is it this what, what makes a campus sustainable? Um, I think that there, was, that there is still some misunderstanding and, and greenwashing on, on this. Is, is a campus full of green per se uh, a sustainable campus or do we need something more? So what is the, the correct balance between built up areas and open spaces? I think this is a, a big question. And how to optimize the use of space, uh, also of open spaces when we think about uh, uh, new ways of teaching, doing research, socializing, how is this, can we achieve a, a good mix of open and, and closed space. Are there any hybrid spaces? We, we as designer, we usually, uh, well, we recently moved the attention also on, on this integration between indoor and outdoor spaces. But in the past, it was more about like designing the buildings, designing the green spaces, and now we understand how they should uh, go together um, as, a, as designers. My last question is about um, how to assess and monitor the overall campus sustainability and communicate data uh, and information to the community. This is also part of the design. How, how uh, we somehow we do in progress towards sustainability or we try to do that, uh, but how to communicate that we are doing well or we have targets and uh, can we somehow make this message more visible in space? Uh, can we in involve students and the community to cooperate through a better way of communicating our uh, targets and, and data and moni moni monitoring system. So uh, any way to improve communication, uh, signages, um, boards, whatever. What is the way, a way to make this message on sustainability visible to everyone on campus? I think this, this uh, is also something we have uh, to deal with. Uh, it's not only through ICT through digital devices that we can get people involved. I think the, the presence in the physical space of this type of message is still important. It should be pervasive, but it's it's not. So it's it's very hard to get people involved in this. And uh, I think we, we still miss uh, powerful ways to to communicate our um, our data and our messages to the community. So this is another way of working on design, maybe communication service design, but it's, it's something really that has to be integrated into the spatial domain. 
I don't know if you have any questions on this, but I, I'm sure we, we're going to go back on these four questions when we move to the um, workshop later after the presentation. Okay, so let's start saying that, of course, you are all aware that um, we have uh, powerful, really, uh, ways to be relevant. So universities is already a critical mass for the change. Uh, I'm mentioning, for instance, there are a lot of networks beside the Idea League, which is a, a, a group of few universities, but there are also a, not, a, lo a lot of different uh, international, regional and national networks that will deal with uh, uh, campus sustainability. I'm mentioning only the International Sustainable Campus Network, which is um, composed by 90 universities over 30 countries and six continents. It accounts for more than 1 million people uh, if, you, if you count all the community members, students and, and teachers so, and, and university staff. So it's, it's really a great way uh, that makes a difference. And even within our universities, we are at Polytechnic, we are about 50,000 people. It's a small town. And in, in this sense, we can ask uh, for more. We are a critical mass in the city. And of course, this is quite, quite important to remember. So we are not just a, a component of society. We are a strong component of society, only in quantitative terms, but also in, in qualitative terms, of course. So it's a challenge to redefine our role uh, at university. And, and well, I skip this part, I go to the um, some points that I would like to mention you. I structured the lecture um, trying to really see how we can design a university uh, and, and trying to uh, really answer this, this issue of how to design sustainability through eight points that are core points for my, um, in, my, in my opinion uh, that should lead a design and management of university. Uh, first thing, when I um, introduce uh, design of a sustainable campus, I think that we have to keep in mind that students, uh, in university students, are really ready to experience innovation. So the, really the campus, university campus, is a perfect, um, let's say, uh, environment to test innovation. So we can give shape to innovation in space. Uh, because our environment is really ready for that. So it's uh, uh, students, uh, of course, they are uh, university students uh, are very keen to use uh, new technologies, uh, but they also want to have are more sensitive to sustainable lifestyles and they also want to save money somehow because they want to make a better use, shared use of facilities. Uh, new generations have and of course, you know, you are a young generation, you know that I like uh, the way we use uh, um, facilities, resources, infrastructure uh, is now uh, really ch has really changed the way we use sharing, for instance. And this sharing of infrastructure of facilities can also affect the way we use space. Instead of having a big parking lot, we need probably less cars in the future because cars will be shared or carpooling. So um, this is just a stupid example, but imagine all the things that and resources and items and assets we, we can share on a campus. And starting from this, maybe we, we should rethink the standards of our campuses. Of, of, and we come back to some of the questions that I posed before. So like how to better make a better use of open spaces, knowing that society is changing, that students are changing the way they use resources, and probably we will use in the future less and less material assets. And, uh, and this will save space. Imagine um, how, I, I, don't, I don't know, is a, an a student in architecture in the past was used to have a big table, technical table, to make drawings, uh, then a big computer, a workstation, uh, and so on. Uh, and, and today, it's, everything is in, in a small laptop. So we, we need really less space for doing many things, but we probably have different needs to use space. Okay, so think, think about this. Um, and then uh, I think innovation is not only technological innovation, 
when it comes to innovation is also social uh, innovation, open innovation and, and environmental also uh, and social lifestyle. So this is an example of a, uh, of a rooftop that was converted into a community garden for students. I think most of universities today have this kind of space and this is another way of regenerating, make, making a better use of space and delegating its usage to students, for instance, or to staff members. Okay, so think about the the, the quantity uh, of of assets and spaces that are not really optimized in in use uh, on your campus, and I think this will help you to envision how to make a better use uh, of space. Roofs is a is a great example, and is is a very easy example of how this resource of of roofs. Could be really enhanced uh, as a as a, an additional surface that can be used. Um, this was an activity we did more than 15 years ago, probably already. It was one of these first uh, parking days where we try to um, create awareness on on how the space was stupidly used on campus uh, with parking lots that were like so um, stupidly used only to park a car that was like staying there for eight hours instead of using this precious space for other uses like socializing or having a garden and and this was a like a sort of um, experience of how to use a parking lot in a different way i'm, I'm happy to say that today uh, since one year this this space is now a um, really a garden uh, exactly when where the student is is uh, uh, now in this picture uh, we have a, a grass here and and this was uh, it took 10 years to to have this process completed uh, so this is really important like first of all also how to get people involved to create awareness about how this could be in the future a space how we can make people aware that oh yeah i didn't think this space could be used in a better way and uh, this is a kind of simulation to me. This is a really one-to-one uh, -one, um, life simulation of what could be in the future. And then, of course, uh, when I think about um, facilities and assets, this is uh, our uh, Policiclo, our bike repair shop and, and office uh, that students manage. So this is something that um, most universities have, but this is something that requires some design, not only the design of the, the space, but also where it's located, how does it run, how does it really, um, let's say, um, work uh, with students, does it really intercept all the main flows so that it's visible on campus. I think this is something also uh, to think about when we do design. And, of course, bike infrastructure on campus. It might be bike repair kit, uh, carpooling places, bike parking, bike stations, and so on. All these are really uh, crucial uh, facilities that are have been implemented uh, recently. But how they fit to the overall design on, on campus? If if we, I mean, if we implement something like a bike um, um, bike parking. Uh, bike station, let's say, uh, that this is was recently opened on our campus a uh, um, couple of months ago. It means that we have to give up another type of usage. Is this the best way to use our open spaces? Are there other examples or other ways that we can optimize the use? Of course, this is a space that hosts a lot of new uh, bikes. Uh, it was formerly a parking lot but maybe in the future we will need something else. And maybe uh, this is um, also very questionable, like is this an exclusive, uh, very precious space in the middle of the campus uh, to be used for parking uh, bikes? Is this a, the best uh, use of we can have? Now maybe it is. It's also a, a message for having a more bike-friendly campus. Maybe it's not also the most innovative way to uh, to achieve the goal of uh, in promoting bike usage. Okay, other things relate, for instance, um, to more, uh, let's say, diffuse the pervasive use uh, of infrastructure and assets. We have uh, uh, 
we are promoting a network of uh, um, of water fountains, drinkable water fountains on campus to reduce plastic uh, um, bottles. Of course, this is now I think a common challenge of all universities and uh, still we have to communicate to be visible to students. Um, I have to say that students get easily used, they know their patterns, they know um, where, um, I mean, uh, they have their own, um, let's say, yeah, patterns during uh, the week and they know they use these kind of facilities. Uh, but anyway, how to integrate a better design of this uh, infrastructure, how to make it visible, how to really embed it in a good way in, in the design of a campus. I think that's that's also another question, how to make water, the, what, the feature of water, the water element becoming central also on campus. And this is just one example, because the way, the experience of water, uh, it's not only about like, you know, reducing plastic usage, it's about providing a new experience of water usage to students. And this has to do with with uh, the way we use the campus, the, with the design of the campus. You know, I think the, the campaigns we uh, all uh, have on uh, reducing plastic, plastic is dangerous, this is, everything is correct, everything is good, but people don't use plastic because they are not environmental friendly. They have different needs and they, people have uh, also different affordances on campus, for instance, and, and uh, if you provide the right infrastructure in the right place, you might be successful, otherwise not. So I think it's also about making this kind of uh, infrastructure visible and usable to people. And so this requires design again on, on campus. So you see that we address different scales from big relationship between open space and buildings to really small scale infrastructure like a um, water fun, fountain might be. But they have to be like designed in a, in a system, um, uh, in, a, in a working system. Uh, is about like uh, uh, how to um, really use uh, the campus as a test bed for experimenting uh, new solutions. Uh, we are technical universities, we are all used to have a lot of research and the question is often why don't we test our results of, of, of our, uh, let's say, research products on campus directly. And uh, I think this requires a lot of work to uh, also convince our researchers and teachers to use the campus uh, as a test bed. And I think this is also our Beauty are our responsibility when we manage sustainability to really encourage uh, our um, our staff, our students to let's do it on campus first of all. Uh, we have some examples uh, in the past. We had uh, like uh, experimentations on, of course, better and more let's say smart use and smart management of uh, garbage bins, of course, through different sensors. Uh, we have a lot of experience also on uh, diagnostics and thermography, uh, assessing, um, uh, let's say, the, the, um, uh, the, uh, the energy performance of our facades and, and buildings. This is something that we really teach at university, but we rarely use it in the management of our buildings. Of course, um, it depends a lot, university by university, if, if you are owner or manager of the buildings or if you are renting the buildings. Uh, in, in our situation, we, we are lucky, we are owners and responsible for the retrofitting of the buildings, so we are quite free uh, to decide how, what to do with our buildings. And of course, this is really research for a lot of our um, colleagues uh, that use uh, um, um, this kind of techniques uh, for energy retrofitting of buildings. And then we have also other ways that we, we can use the campus. For instance, the integration of nature-based solutions. This is, comes back to one of the questions that I posed, uh, namely how to better create a, a symbiosis, a relationship between open spaces and indoor spaces, how we can better integrate, for instance, nature on buildings and not only on open spaces. And I think a lot of um, now in, in architecture, this is a, a really open 
discussion, really, really trendy, sometimes greenwashing, but still we need some research testing. And in, in, in our roof here, we have uh, different uh, examples of different patterns of green roofs to test uh, their behavior, uh, if they improve the insulation, if, if they decrease temperature and so on. So how to really using our infrastructure to test the different solutions, how they perform in terms also uh, of, um, let's say, uh, of design. Um, does, it, does it work? Does it not work? Uh, is it easy to maintain or not? Does it create issues with the uh, roof insulation and so on? These, these are all tests that we uh, do. Uh, this is a very recent also um, innovative wall that uh, requires very little maintenance and uh, we are also trying to see how um, really uh, we can enhance in a campus that doesn't have so much green, um, how we can enhance the presence of green, uh, how these vertical walls can also improve, uh, can also improve the comfort of people in, in the summer season. So walls play a bigger role uh, compared to green roofs in uh, improving the environmental comfort uh, of people while walking on campus while staying close to green can also enhance uh, through evapotranspiration can enhance uh, the uh, human comfort of people so this is really important uh, green is not only because of green and biodiversity which, which is crucial but it's also a way to enhance the use of open spaces uh, during summer or even during winter because of shadowing but because also of uh, evapotranspiration and then of course all the monitoring systems that we can um, we can improve uh, on campus uh, and, and map it so really we um, we try and I think most universities doing this uh, we try to improve to work both on mitigation and adaptation strategies and when it comes to adaptation Having enhancing green areas and permeability of soil is the first thing you have to do. Like there is no other, uh, let's say, um, better way to to address uh, climate adaptation besides increasing permeability. So having more green rare areas on the ground and having more trees. And this is something uh, we had we are struggling with. Uh, an example. Uh, I, I provide you some example. We removed all the parking lots internally, most of the parking lots, not all of them. We still have some mandatory, let's say, uh, parking lots inside the campus, but we turn these uh, parking lots into green areas. Uh, even as I said, we have very limited green uh, spaces. Um, another uh, project, this was uh, conceptually designed by Renzo Piano um, some years ago. And this is the outcome last year uh, uh, that uh, we added 120 trees on our campus. This was formerly, you see in the smaller picture, everything was gray. So typically Politecnico was known for its gray uh, atmosphere, uh, parking lots, buildings, everything was gray. Uh, and uh, we now have a, a new, uh, let's say, uh, place, a new plaza with, with trees, and, and it's a new core uh, on the architecture campus. You see in the background the uh, Gioponti building, and in front of it we try to do our best, even with limited uh, availability of space, at least to add uh, trees and some green areas. And I think this, this is also a way, uh, an easy way, uh, easy, yeah, it's quite easy, but uh, everything, uh, I mean, no, no excuse to have uh, cars on, on campus anymore. Uh, these are the simulations I was mentioning before. Um, regarding the critical mass, I have to say that, and, and when it comes to design, I also invite you to think about how to make better use of sharing uh, society, sharing city um, opportunities. We, we, can get, uh, we can get a lot of, uh, we have, um, uh, we have 40,000 potential users of different um, uh, services and this, in this way we can also uh, easily get in conventions, I, I mean agreements with uh, providers and we are working a lot on, on this to get uh, 
um, sharing mobility con agreements and other uh, type of services that uh, enable us to reduce the number of, um, of cars and not only for cars but we also uh, try to organize uh, a local farmer market on the square and uh, this is also a nice way so if you have a critical mass you know you have 40,000 people um, on, on campus then maybe it's easier for farmers to come from the agricultural park that it's um, close to Milan and sell their products here you know you, you need some uh, people <laughs> you need some clients and this is a great way to do it and then of course don't forget that universities are key uh, big uh, players in a city usually at least in italy but i think in general in, in europe in order to regenerate um, districts uh, cities always refer to universities as a as a key stakeholder you know you open a, a, a new uh, campus on a peripheral areas that requires uh, regeneration and this is the perfect way to bring in new um people um all, also rich people somehow let's say allow me to say rich people it, it means students that are uh, that can rent apartments that can uh, um, do shopping and consume resources so it's it's a way to really uh, have a better also uh, control of space and having a, um, a good population on, on, on in the city and actually in in Milan this was a, a strategy that has been used a lot a lot of projects the main master plans that you see in the city are related to university transformation uh, Bocconi University was a is a private university in economic studies that worked a lot uh, and invested a lot in good architectural uh, design. This is the Sana um, by Tatsuyo Seishima uh, in new master plan that was recently completed. Uh, but then Grafton Architects did the first part. So it, they, they really invested a lot in good quality uh, architecture. And in this last master plan that was recently completed, uh, the agreement with the city was that all the open spaces that you uh, have on this new campus uh, will be open uh, to all the citizens and this will be a sort of urban park shared with the students and citizens so how think about how universities and this is another important question how universities um, resources and spaces can be also uh, open uh, to the local communities how can we interact uh, with the city and this is our also responsibility somehow of course now due to restrictions uh, on of the pandemics it's very hard to have people uh, inside so everything is closed again but it will probably soon uh, be reopened for um, this kind of communication this is our um, campus uh, in Bovisa, which is in, in another district, and it's a, a it's a project for the new master plan uh, redesign uh, of um, part of the master plan, part of the campus with new uh, green areas, a, a green uh, parks. Uh, this campus, in particular, re really lacks of of green areas. It was a former industrial areas and has a lot of issues with soil. Uh, um, pollutants so the, the 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 aspect today is quite gray but in the future through uh, soil remediation uh, the new parks new parks will be will be open and i think this is another way to work with adaptation to climate change not only for the campus but especially for the communities that live in the surroundings because you give back some new services and places also for um for the community so think about it how what, how really also local uh, communities may, may enjoy from, from this transformation. So I, I skip this. Um, and then a very important question uh, that I pose you, it's, it's part of the second question that we tackled earlier. It's about like, uh, shall we offer closed systems or design closed systems or open systems? Um, imagine that this is a very um, important question also in, uh, in sustainability assessment. How, how do we uh, take into account exogenous factors, so factors or issue uh, elements 
that can limit or enhance sustainability that are not we are not responsible for. I, I make an, some examples now, but let's imagine that it's very hard to say that a campus is completely a closed system. We depend on many services and facilities that we have in the city and uh, we cannot ignore it. So some universities behave or perform better, some others do not. And uh, this is also an issue when it comes to ranking. We have a big discussion in Italy on how to really take into account an objective a way of, of doing a ranking of sustainability on universities. We have differences between places, between cities in the north of Italy and cities in the south of Italy. Uh, we can, every city relies on a different environmental management system and this impacts also on the possibilities, opportunities that we have to behave in a better way. For instance, uh, I provide you, this is an example of a, a master thesis uh, by Ethan Karabai. She was a stu former student of mine and she did a work on different, tackling different urban morphologies of different campuses. Uh, every campus is different, so it's very hard to compare or make a comparison of sustainability. And we have to also trying to understand what, what is the role of morphology, of the way a design uh, is made. So this comes back to the question about what is the relationship between the proportion between open spaces and closed spaces? What is the, how, how these campuses are inside the city embedded or are outside the city? Are they compact? Are they diffuse? Some universities, like uh, here is, you have an example in Venice in the upper right side, where the university actually is composed by buildings diffused uh, in, a, in a very, uh, in the city. So it's not a campus, but still uh, it's a university campus somehow, and the city becomes the campus. And uh, when it comes also in uh, assessing sustainability uh, in a city like Venice, where there are no cars and everything is sustainable from scratch, but still the ranking uh, of sustainability is very low in Venice because it lacks of green areas, but you cannot in enhance green areas in a historical center like Venice uh, in, in considering the shape of this campus, you know? So it's, it's very hard to say that there might be a universal ranking system or evaluation system of sustainability. It really depends on how um, the, 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 the spatial organization of a city of a campus uh, is. And I think this, this is something we have to really take into, take into account in consideration. And um, you, we, we, through this work, we basically, uh, or, um, let's say, um, assessed for or recognized for different ways uh, of having uh, campuses or of campus design uh, inner city campuses uh, urban urban oases like this example in Hokkaido it's like a big big park inside the city where you have a campus then then we have some example like APFL in Lausanne which is we call the urban uh, example because it's a sort of uh, um, new campus uh, on the edge of the city uh, that has all the like uh, close to urban areas but still uh, has a, a urban setting and then we have also uh, rural uh, campuses uh, that uh, are really uh, outside the city in a completely urban uh, rural environment so of course you can imagine how these morphologies uh, affect the sustainability of campuses. Uh, in an inner city, for instance, this is also the case of um, Polytechnico. Uh, we have most of the movements of the transport of mobility uh, is uh, through uh, walking and, and public transportation. But if you are in a completely uh, remote uh, rural uh, or urban setting, most of the people will drive their car to reach this place, or in, in the case you don't have a very good uh, uh, transport system, public transport system. So when it comes to assessing sustainability, we cannot ignore that the, the city or the environment surrounding the campus plays a big role. Uh, having, for instance, in our case, two um, a, a train station and, and also 
uh, one um, metroway uh, underground line uh, also supports the sustainability of our campus, of course. Another example is waste uh, waste management. I I don't know uh, how your university works, but we are inside the city, and the city has its own management system uh, for waste collection, and we have to follow these rules. It's very rare that the university um, takes a, a, a unique uh, or say a, a, a let's say a, a special uh, waste collection system uh, in, for in, for managing uh, this collection, but it usually relies on the city system uh, because otherwise it would be really di difficult. But there are good examples, very ambitious universities that try to make a zero university, zero waste university program, and they manage themselves everything so that this, the university doesn't have any kind of uh, um, of waste generated for the city. Of course, this is, I, I think it's almost impossible for now, but it's a good program, it's a good way, an ambitious way to start thinking about. So how can we really reduce to zero our waste? Uh, of course, you can uh, work on composting, uh, organic waste collection, everything, but it requires a lot of investment and a lot of man good management, which, which is in our case still not the case. Um, so any ideas uh, that how different urban systems, also water, not only waste, water, energy, and so on, uh, can really impact the sustainability of your campus. Uh, please inter tell me when I'm uh, uh, close to the end of the lecture, because I think we, I'm almost there. Uh, if, if there are five or ten minutes missing, so I, I go faster. Um, and uh, yeah, and then of course universities have also easy as access to credit. It means that uh, banks uh, will, uh, of course, uh, uh, are willing to offer money uh, for investments. Uh, also, because the universities are solid actors, they will not disappear. So we can take the banks can take the risk of investment, and uh, I think that's why we should uh, also make uh, uh, more ambitious projects on campuses these are uh, there are some examples um, we just uh, well we just in 2015 we uh, in, um, implemented a new tri 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 generation plant nowadays it, it's questionable if we need a tri generation plant or if we should completely go towards renewables and decarbonization but at that point at that time it was a very ambitious project, very expensive, and we got uh, access to credit uh, because of um, it was several millions euros to implement this kind of uh, um, in facility for producing uh, cooling and heating on campus. Um, we also have uh, a good possibility to work uh, with private partners. This is, uh, this is the Velux Lab. Um, at Politecnico, and it's a, a very smart, special building. It's also a research facility to see how we can optimize uh, comfort and, and energy in indoor building. And it was done in partnership with Velux. Uh, in the past, we had a lot of resistance of having this kind of uh, collaboration with private partners entering a public university. Nowadays, this collaboration is more uh, open, and uh, I think having also uh, strengthening the partnerships through sustainable development goals uh, towards these sustainable development goals is a great way that universities and private partners can collaborate. So how also to design a campus that can uh, enhance or give opportunities for collaboration with private and public partners outside. So if you have space, you can manage to have also temporary buildings or temporary spaces uh, or permanent spaces that are designed in collaboration with uh, private partners. But then you need a structure that can somehow find and host uh, this kind of uh, projects uh, on, on site. Um, on governance, which is the sixth point of my presentation, I will go very fast because I know you already have a lecture on governance. Uh, just to say that 
um, I'll skip this slide. So how to organize a smart governance system on campus. Um, I, know, I know Mark also had a lecture uh, on this. And uh, I just go back to the fact that in, in order to get people involved, we can use really uh, new um, ways of co-design using simulation, as I was showing you before. This is something we have used a lot. So how to involve students in architecture and urban planning to design uh, their campuses. Uh, we um, we had this kind of um, attention. We organized uh, contests with students, but also another interesting way is using tactical urbanism. We in order to uh, renovate the, seat, the, the square in front of our campus, we first closed the parking lots and then we started reconquering the space uh, through a series of activities. It was like, uh, um, it was like um, arts, uh, it was sport, it was a lot of uh, um, cultural and, and activities that started uh, collecting people, gathering people on this space that was never used as a public square because it was a parking lot. And it really helped to create awareness and people started saying, okay, this space is important. Only after this, let's say, sequence calendar of, of events uh, and a lot of uh, involvements of, of students, of, of people uh, and happenings, then we, uh, a final design was uh, achieved and uh, the place was turned into a pedestrian area so this was the final design but first we had to reconquer the space this was the this was the idea and this is the final then design so from a parking lot into a um into a public square okay i think i should go to conclusion this is how it looks like now um i go very fast uh, and then, of course, using um, modeling, simulation, physical and digital simulation uh, to involve people, uh, students, community. Uh, we organize a lot of uh, charrette or um, workshops of activities uh, to vote, to design, to uh, ask people opinion and, and uh, provide ideas uh, for our campus. And these are some events that we organized in the past, but I go very quickly. And with the final then uh, uh, design scenarios that have been organized, uh, designed by students themselves, how to really reconquer space for social and environmental purposes uh, on campus. Uh, of course, now we have also new technologies that help in doing this uh, transformation. Um, these are some examples, just to conclude, on, on, on a contest that we organized before the, the final design was provided by Renzo Piano to create awareness in our governance about how this space could be really changed. And, and students provided great ideas. I think sometimes also even better than Renzo Piano, if I might say, uh, on very fresh uh, design, how this space could be really turned into a new garden and public uh, space. These are only some examples that have been designed by, designed by students. I think I should conclude. I'm sorry if I'm late. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I can I can stop here, uh, and uh, and we can come back to our questions then. And thank you for attention.